For triple integrals, the story is much the same for double integrals. If we want to change variables, then we have to do the usual of update our function by replacing each of the variables with its expression in terms of the new variables, and then update our volume element. And our volume element update involves the absolute value of the Jacobian with the du, dv, dw. The Jacobian in this case is just like it was for two variables. We just now have an extra row and column. So it's three variables and you just do like you would for the two variables. So it's the first row is the derivative of x with respect to u, v, and w, then the derivative of y with respect to u, v, and w, and z with respect to u, v, and w. Once you've got that matrix of partial derivatives, then you compute the determinant, and that's the Jacobian. The absolute value is what gets used in the expression in the integral. So let's go ahead and use this to derive the formula for triple integration in spherical coordinates. So the focus here is entirely on just working out the Jacobian. So remember the change of coordinates for spherical coordinates is rho is, I'm sorry, x is rho sine phi cos theta, y is rho sine phi sine theta, and z is rho cos phi. Then we set up the Jacobian. And the Jacobian, I'll go to actually to a new page here, the Jacobian is dxyz over d rho theta phi. And so our entries are going to be the derivative of x with respect to rho, the derivative of x with respect to theta, the derivative of x with respect to phi, and similarly for y, and finally z. So we've got nine derivatives to compute, and then a determinant to work out after that. What are our nine derivatives? Well, this is sine phi cos theta. The derivative with respect to theta is negative rho sine phi sine theta, and the derivative with respect to phi is rho cos phi cos theta. And then the next line, y sub rho is sine phi sine theta. The derivative with respect to theta is rho sine phi cos theta, and the derivative with respect to phi is rho cos phi sine theta. And then lastly for z, it's cos phi, zero, and negative rho sine phi. Now we're going to need to compute the determinant of this. Uh, for the determinant, we can expand along any row or column. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the expansion along the last row, because that involves a zero. So it's going to be cosine of phi times the determinant of the resulting 2 by 2 matrix. And that will be, I'll write the 2 by 2 matrix in here. That will be, actually I could just copy and paste it. It's this upper portion right here. That's the 2 by 2 matrix. So we will copy that and we will paste that in here. So there's that upper 2 by 2 matrix. And then I subtract off 0 times the determinant of the 2 by 2 submatrix, but it's 0 times it, so it's just 0. And then add to that the negative rho sine phi times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix, which is this one up here. So we'll paste that one in there. Didn't make it wide enough. There we go. And so then we can go ahead and work out each of those determinants. So this is cos phi. And then we've got a 
rho squared cos phi sine phi sine squared theta and that's got a negative in front of it and then we've got a minus rho squared sine phi cos phi cos squared theta and then minus rho sine phi and then the determinant of this just a single rho sine squared phi cos squared theta plus rho sine squared phi sine squared theta and I notice in this first one I've got a cos phi cos phi sine phi sine phi sine squared cos squared but I've also got a row in front <clears throat> and a negative sign so this whole thing just simplifies down to I can pull out the negative row squared cos phi sine phi and I'm just left with sine squared plus cos squared which is one so this becomes a negative row squared and we got a cos squared phi because there's already cos out front, sine phi. And then the last one is, uh, again, I've got sine squared phi, sine squared phi, rho, rho. And they're sitting in front of a cos squared and a sine squared. So that becomes a minus rho squared sine cubed phi. And then the cos squared plus sine squared is just 1. So this becomes a negative rho squared. I can factor out a sine phi. And I'm left with a cos squared phi plus sine squared phi, which again is just 1. So that becomes a negative rho squared sine phi. And so there is our Jacobian. And therefore, the absolute value of our Jacobian, x, y, z, d, rho, theta, phi, the absolute value of it is equal to rho squared sine phi. And that was the thing we need in our integration formula for the change of variables. So there is our rho squared sine phi that we knew we would expect to get. Alright, that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.